Um, I don't have that much idea of what I'm going to say either, but uh, a while back we talked about me speaking about faith on the move, and uh, Janelle said I was going to talk about global Christianity, and Ryan told me to talk about uh, home and church, but I'm good at talking, so I'm not too worried. And uh, all those, all those themes are uh, sort of <clears throat> the themes that spiral around in my life. Um, so I'll just jump into it. As as was mentioned, um, Casa Dobe. Casa Dobe is where Ruth and I uh, call our home. Um, I'll just say a little bit about that right off the bat. Uh, it's a Christian intentional community. It's people that decided to live together out of their faith. If you've read the book of Acts, uh, you might have a, a little bit of an idea. We try and uh, really go back and bring a lot of different aspects of life together there and share not just um, family or a building or a beautiful sanctuary on Sunday, but a lot of things, and we weave that all together. Um, right now, I think we're about 14 people, just two or three different older families like Ruth and I, and there's usually some volunteers, some refugees, some young people, some high schoolers or college-age kids. Uh, some people come out of need, and some people come out of a vocation. So I'm going to use that place <clears throat> as sort of a reference point as I speak. Um, faith on the move is, is going to be woven through there. Um, it's sort of odd for me maybe to speak about faith on the move. I, I grew up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, I could walk to my um, first grade. Um, I could walk to my middle school. I could walk to my junior high. Uh, when I got to high school, it was a little farther, you know, it was like 15 blocks instead of eight. <clears throat> so I rode my bike. And then I went to Calvin College, um, which was maybe 20, 25 blocks. So I grew up in a teeny little square. Um, and then my world changed. I think um, when we think about home, sometimes we think about home like, <clears throat> this is the way mom and dad did it. Okay, <clears throat> I'm a little rebellious. I got a few of my own ideas. I'm gonna do one or two changes. But that's, that's the basic idea, right? <clears throat> Mom and dad's house. We also have like the idea of the ideal or stereotypical or normative home that we pick up in, from society. You know, the joke is uh, <clears throat> a man and a woman, 2.3 kids, a cat and a dog, hopefully... Uh, the Haitians and J.D. Vance won't eat them. <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> I make bad jokes. Um, I take that back. Uh, <clears throat> and a white picket fence, you know? And we, every generation wants a bigger house <clears throat> and a bigger fence. Maybe less kids, but uh, we have this dream bigger, bigger and better. Um, and then people go out and do innovative things, you know? They change up the rules, you know? Uh, gay marriage. I never thought that would be a reality in, uh, in our world. And some people think and talk about, you know, biblical family and biblical things and try and get us back there. And then when you go to the Bible, <clears throat> you also have some different examples than man and wife and 2.3 kids, you know? Solomon had about a uh, 100 wives and a 1,000 concubines, you know? <clears throat> David and Bathsheba, 
uh, uh, you know, Abraham had Hagar. And so there's all these variations, some good, some bad, some secular, some within the church or the church community. At Casa Lobe, <clears throat> we try and go back to Scripture and prophetically reimagine what some of the biblical values of family, of home, of church might be. And we try and reset them uh, for our context, often for people on the move, for young people that are passing into a new generation, for migrants that are thrown out of their country, for North Americans exploring the world. And um, when, when you go to the Bible and dig deep into it, there's some important constants. And there are some things that change, you know? Things are different. In the Old Testament, the New Testament, in exile, <clears throat> out of exile, in Rome or in Greece or in Judea, <clears throat> things get set up different. Um, Casa Adobe tries to not be a recipe for anyone, but a provocation to our imaginations. That <clears throat> mom and dad's house and in, in my, my family's home, the trash was always in the kitchen <clears throat> under the sink on the right-hand side. And I remember <clears throat> going to a friend's house, well, several friends' house, and the trash was always there. And then I went to somebody else's house, <clears throat> and the trash wasn't under the kitchen sink on the right-hand side. <clears throat> and as a little kid, I was like, this is wrong. <clears throat> um, as I got older, I searched through Leviticus, and I, and I couldn't, even in Leviticus or Deuteronomy, find a passage that said the trash had to be under the sink on the right-hand side. We need to go back to Scripture <clears throat> and discover what, its values are, and what it can say to us today. And a lot of that is built around love of God, love of neighbor. And we <clears throat> need to critically look at society <clears throat> and some of the church's older answers that don't quite fit for this modern time. Um, a lot of our young people have new questions, have new forms of worship, uh, have been shut down in their churches, and they, and they, they come to Casa Lobe, and they want to ask tough questions, and, and we let them. <clears throat> Casa Lobe is a place where family isn't just Ruth and I. It started that way. We have six kids. So it was a big place. And then some of our kids <clears throat> had friends who had troubles in their families, and they ended up in the house. We weren't trying to violate um, a biblical conception of, you know, the right and proper nuclear family. We were trying to love <clears throat> our kids' friends. Um, shortly after that, a Nicaraguan family um, living in a slum <clears throat> was having trouble with a peeping Tom, let's call him, or we could call him a sexual abuser trying to get after their uh, teenage daughter. And they had substandard housing, and we moved them into our garage <clears throat> and quickly built some walls and a sink and the like. As, as we started to think more about intentional community, uh, widening our circle, we thought about um, 
pregnant teenage girls or something is probably what we end up taking in because Ruth and I were committed to, to running a pretty open home. Instead, we got a divorced guy with his daughter. Um, surprises along the way. The intentional part of the community <clears throat> is actually often we call it now accidental, <laughs> organic. Things happened. And um, we were able to go off a script, a script that mom and dad maybe set up for us, or a script that society said, you know, buy a big house, buy a big car, <clears throat> sacrifice everything for your kids so they can go to Harvard or wherever or play in the best sports team. And we could, we could move into um, what for us and our ability and our calling and our capacity at that time was stretching but was within our capacity. A lot of people come to Casa Lobe nowadays <clears throat> and they've heard about it and they want to visit. And I want to emphasize again, what we try and do there is not theorize about family <clears throat> or home or even home cooking, um, but do something that provokes people's imagination that invites folks to make a move <clears throat> away from their faith uh, getting stale, to take a step forward out <clears throat> on a journey. Abraham took quite a journey. There's lots of journeys in the Bible. <clears throat> Jesus was a refugee before he started his ministry. <clears throat> the early church was chased out of Jerusalem. And then in, in breaking with some of the imaginaries that we have <clears throat> and getting out a little bit on the road, it's a little scary, um, especially if you don't have the perfect plan set up, if you don't have all the funding, <clears throat> if you only got five loaves and a couple of fishes <clears throat> and you don't even have a kitchen. But that place of dependence on God is a very special place. When you got your plan all set up and you're in control and you're checking the boxes on your to-do list one by one and you got enough money for all of it, <clears throat> that's great. You can get a lot done. But the place of, of journey, the place of seeing 5,000 people, We've never had 5,000 people at Casa Lobe, but we have 35 <coughs> regularly, not 35,000. Um, when you see all those people and you got to feed them, <coughs> uh, you, don't, you don't depend on your checkbook or your bank account. You depend on who you live with and a tr faith and trust in God to be able to get enough plates and chairs <clears throat> and soup around the table. So, that's a call I, I, I just want to extend. You know? Think about your family. Think about the ideal family of society. Think about how we thought about family <clears throat> last generation. I grew up, um, if you ain't Dutch, you ain't much, you know? <clears throat> In our family now, we have people from Argentina and the United States. We've had Salvadorans, uh, Venezuelans, uh, Italians, Brazilians, Bolivians, Canadians, uh, and several other. <clears throat> and we have kids. 
and they go to school and they learn about family at school and they and you know the third grade teacher says draw your family <clears throat> and then the kids from Casa Lobe <clears throat> are stuck <clears throat> and the teacher comes over and says what's the matter you know like don't you have a dad or something no, it's that um, I have a mom and a dad, but also I have this this crazy guy that I call uncle and this other lady I call aunt. And then I have these other kids, but they aren't my sisters, but they are. <clears throat> um, that's all right. That's part of making a dent in the world. Sometimes we think, we're in the election season, sometimes we think only if my candidate gets elected, <clears throat> uh, our thing is going to change. Or if I get money from my ministry project, am I going to be able to get something done? At Casa Lobo, we don't have a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, we don't usually have fish either. We do have tortillas, we have coffee, <clears throat> and we break them with people. And we also try and break molds. There are molds that are good and powerful and positive and hold us well and contain us. And there are molds that hold back the love of God. We have a Bible study on Sunday nights. <clears throat> um, we gather in a very small space. We don't have a pastor with one of those things around his neck <clears throat> or in a red dress. <clears throat> um, and we didn't really think of ourselves as a church. But more and more people came <laughs> and people started to say that we were their church. We weren't trying to replace the church. We never said, the church is bad. You shouldn't have a big organ and beautiful <clears throat> ceiling or whatever. We got together in our house, and people started to call it church. And just like I tried to say, Casa Dove is a provocation of the imagination. <clears throat> I, I want to say there are other forms of church. There are different folks that need a different wineskin. And for us and some of them, Casa Dove is a great place. And for a lot of people at third, this place is wonderful, I'm sure. Maybe Ryan could do a better job, but <clears throat> Janelle, Janelle does a <clears throat> perfect job, right? Um, and in each area of life, in Casa Lobe, we try to be a provocation. We try and go back to the Bible and find some of those original principles so, Ruth and I used to own Casa Dove. <clears throat> now it's a corporation with shares. <clears throat> and we try to practice a bit of jubilee and paying off our debts to all the people that haven't had such a great life. And so the people in Casa Dove now are owners also. <clears throat> I'm just going to run through a couple of quick examples, and then we're going to go to questions of these provocations. <clears throat> we try to be neighbors, you know? Um, but way beyond hi, neighbor, on the porch, you know, we have our neighbors into our house. We have the old people in for coffee. We have the young kids in to be tutored. <clears throat> we have... Uh, the moms that are struggling have coffee together and talk. <clears throat> uh, again, I was asked to talk about Casa Dove. This is 
something that's 15 years in the making, and we took little steps along the way. I'm not saying anyone needs to <clears throat> move into an intentional Christian community, but I do want to sort of wrap up <clears throat> one more thing first before I wrap up. <clears throat> we started out loving our neighbors, which were people, and then we figured out the river was our neighbor too. The river was full of trash. The river was abandoned. The river was the hangout place for the drug dealers. And we, you know, we thought maybe we should clean it up a little bit or something. But we came to a, a deeper sort of spiritual place where not that we're adoring nature like some animus, but the river and the watershed are our home. And they're part of God's creation. And so we embrace that place. And we actively set out towards making it more home-like, <clears throat> more neighborly for the people forced to live there. Costa Rica is a beautiful place. Lots of people come on vacation. But it's also a path for migrants. And we've taken in quite a few over the years. So again, I'd just like to use our experience at Casa Lobe of making home, of trying to be neighbors, of reinventing, for some of us, new wineskin church. A call to all of us to not stay in the box mom and dad gave us that the trash needs to be under the sink on the right-hand side. <clears throat> to not think that the way grandpa did church is the way granddaughter needs to do church. And the way um, Uncle Fred's business was run is the way all businesses need, need to be run. We can find biblical principles and we can take little steps, all of us, at any age in shaking up prophetically our imaginations and taking a few more steps towards a full biblical life. We don't need to wait for the 5th of November <clears throat> or a big grant from the city of Holland. We can do it today. Thank you. I'll stop there. And there'll be some questions, maybe, unless you all want to get out of here. <clears throat> I'm not quite. Yes, it is. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. The, we're open for questions, and we have these two mics circling. Who would like to ask the first question? I have a question. Um, in your ministry or your outreach to include neighbors, is it also the case that you have become involved with any church outside Casa Dobe? Local church? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, in a lot of different ways. So we meet on Sunday nights. A lot of people that live with us go to a different church at, on Sunday morning. We also, as a intentional community that has a little bit of history now, uh, we're called Casa Adobe. We have a little fragile shoot of a network called Entre Casas, between casas, between homes, where we try and uh, network and support some other intentional communities uh, throughout Latin America. And um, because we've trained and discipled uh, quite a few young people over the years, uh, some of them are starting new church new communities, uh, new house churches, new uh, things that most people wouldn't recognize as, a, you know, this kind of church, but our church. Thank you. Next question. I have two. One, would you spell the name of your home? Yeah, 
Um, I'll spell the name and my wife will give you a card <laughs> <coughs> that has uh, it on casa, is a mm -hmm. Spanish word for home, mm -hmm. C-A-S-A, -A. and then adobe. Okay. <coughs> adobe uh, is A-D-O-B-E. And I think I did that right without spell check. <laughs> And I'll just, I'm just going to do one riff on Adobe. <clears throat> and then we'll take your second question. So, Casa Adobe <clears throat> is really not made out of Adobe. If you know what Adobe is, it's a mud brick, right? <clears throat> and mud is messy and, uh, you know, biblical. And we all come from the earth and then... Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's not that strong. You know, if you have one adobe and you kick it, give it a good kick, it will probably shatter. If you have one cement block and you kick it, you'll probably have a sore toe. <clears throat> the metaphor we use at Casa Lobe is that we are the adobes. We are imperfect. We are made of earth. And some adobes even have a bit of dung in them <clears throat> and straw, you know. So we try and be very humble about who we are and how fragile we are and how <clears throat> you can't build anything with one adobe. But <clears throat> if you put them together and if you find the right cornerstone, hint, hint, biblical verse, um, it can hold together pretty well. And even a bunch of imperfect, broken people can create shelter for others. Second question, I think you have. I do. Would you talk a little bit about the shares that you referred to in passing? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, we're not supposed to talk about money, right? <clears throat> That's impolite. Um, but the Bible talks about it a lot. The Bible talks a lot about wealth and poverty. And so uh, Ruth and I have been, you know, we're just missionaries, but we've been blessed with pretty decent, stable life. And a lot of the folks in our community have been chased out of their country and the like. And so um, I guess uh, when we go back to the some of the biblical models, um, there's a call to, <clears throat> to take a Sabbath, to give the land a rest, to pay off your debts, you know? Uh, we don't have a lot of debt. <clears throat> we do have a mortgage, but um, there is, in a sense, um, in those biblical Old Testament passages, a sense of collective societal responsibility and that everybody should have something, right? Uh, even um, diehard capitalists often talk about an ownership society and giving everyone a chance to like have uh, something to be creative with, something to own. <clears throat> you don't have to be Karl Marx to think that. It'd be nice if everyone had 40 acres and a mule. Um, and so we try to do that. We try to do that. Thank you. How about another question? Thanks, Jim. Um, yeah, I had the privilege of going to Casa Adobe that last year, I think, um, and did return feeling like my imagination was stirred and um, had a good conversation with Carter about that. And then it, it felt like it was sort of harder to put into place the things that I was imagining um, because maybe our imaginings get kind of choked out by the busyness of life here. And I was just kind of thinking about how for you, uh, it seems like you know grew up in Grand Rapids, but now you're in Costa Rica. So you're out of your native home culture. In some ways, it seems like a more fruitful ground for imagining something new or stepping out of the mold. And I'm wondering for us here who, you know, maybe grew up in the same place and yeah, attend a more structured church environment. Um, it can be 
maybe a little bit more challenging, I think, to rethink things. And um, so those are just some of my thoughts. And I don't know if you have any, um, anything to, any advice, I guess, to offer us. Yeah, Faith on the Move, that was one of the names of the talks. Um, I think we need, do need to move, you know? We do need, uh, I, I am who I am because after those 21 years in one corner of Grand Rapids, I went on a study abroad trip and boom, <clears throat> sort of the scales fell off of my eyes and I, <clears throat> even though I'm a good Calvinist, I had a <clears throat> conversion experience uh, uh, to serving the poor. Um, and in, in our training programs and discipleship and mentoring programs, we try and do that. I mean, we try and uh, destabilize people a little bit so that the hold of the world, you know, be not a prisoner of this world, but let your minds be transformed. You know, I, I think we need to do that. We need to challenge ourselves. Sometimes right now in society, it seems like too much is changing. <clears throat> but maybe we need to together hold on to each other in the midst of all that change and go to Scripture. But I do think that movement, that challenge uh, is important. And you can find it here. Angel is sitting in the back. <clears throat> um, I didn't know much about Holland. When I first came here, he drove me around Holland and showed me the trailer parks. I mean, probably a lot of us have never been in a trailer park. Um, that's right here. Uh, worlds that are really, really different <clears throat> from your own, especially if it was like mine <clears throat> uh, growing up, are right here. You don't need to come all the way to Mexico or Costa Rica to see other worlds. There are other worlds right here in Holland and Grand Rapids, wherever it might be. I used to teach high school completion out on farms, you know, with migrant workers. <clears throat> there are hidden pockets of other worlds right here. You just need to dare to go find them. And they'll shake up your world. What's your favorite thing about living in a shared community? Uh, what's my favorite thing? <clears throat> well, first I want to say <clears throat> living in a shared community is really hard. Uh, do you have any brothers or sisters? And do you uh, ever fight with them? Okay. Now I'm thinking about having like 13 more brothers and sisters. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then think about all the dishes. You ever have to do the dishes? Or you got a dishwasher. At least I have to load the dishwasher, right? <clears throat> There's a lot of dishes. <clears throat> you, and those of you who have read the epistles Paul wrote and thought, man, this guy's a sloppy theologian. Actually, he's just writing pastoral letters to communities like ours they're always fighting about the dishes and where the Jews get to sit and where this, you know, this, who's going to pay to free the slaves today? You know, it's your turn to buy, uh, buy a slave and free them and all these different issues. <clears throat> so shared community is tough, but it, 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 it sharpens you over time. Um, bit, yeah. Do you have a follow up question? I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting to the favorite thing. <clears throat> uh, the favorite thing is that when you're in the right mood <clears throat> and you want to have a big meal and a feast, <clears throat> you don't even have to call anybody up. You, <clears throat> you want to play a game. <clears throat> you want to watch a movie. You want to play ball. <clears throat> you got a whole slew of people to do it. And if you want to go hide out in your room, we make space for that too. Thank you. Another question? Um, I, 
I don't have a question. I just have an observation. Um, I, I think, Laura, when you asked your question, made me think of this, but <clears throat> there are little ways that, that we can um, open our homes to other people uh, without you know, being a casa adobe. And I mean, one of the ways that <clears throat> I know our family has done it over the years is, is to be a host family for foreign students at Hope College. And it's brought lots of benefits um, in terms of getting to know other people and just being family for them while they're here in Holland. So it's just an observation. Would you care to add comment? Yeah, and we're about out of yeah, time. Yeah, we're near okay. the end. I will just respond to that one and, and wrap up. Yeah, that's a great, practical, small step. And um, this society tends to emphasize individuals, you know, or nuclear families. And some of the societies in Latin America are at least still a bit more communal and the like. Um, The scriptures call us to be the people of God. So I think we each need to take our own little bit of individual steps, but collectively, we also need to take steps. So, you know, we did it at Casa Love. You think about how you can do it. Because for the world to see Christ, <clears throat> for the gospel, which means good news, to be out there, <clears throat> we need to depend on our ability to do this together. <clears throat> Not Ryan, <clears throat> Angel, and Janelle's ability to preach us there. <clears throat> we need to be the people of God in a society that is polarized, that is hurting, that is unequal, that is broken. And that is <clears throat> evangelism. That is the power of being a people that are different. And that's what we are called to do. Thank you. I'd like us to continue reflecting individually and together about how we might do that. That meaning all kinds of ways of um, provoking ourselves, <laughs> letting ourselves be provoked by the gospel. Thank you very much. God bless you.